Thanks so much for joining us here today. I am here with my friend, Scott Connery. He is the owner of Carborough Coffee in Carborough, North Carolina. Today, we're going to be talking about his passion for coffee and his passion for connection with people. So thanks so much for being here, Scott. Wonderful to be here. So when did you start being interested in coffee? Um, from a very young age, which I think is unusual, maybe a little bit in this country, not so much in other countries. Definitely here, I think it's weird if you're like me and you're 10 years old and you were drinking coffee in the first place. <laughs> But I also enjoyed it, which I think was even more weird or, or unusual. What did your yeah. folks say about that? Uh, they were puzzled. I think <laughs> would be a good word. Um, but they were, my mother in particular, just sort of, okay, I guess you like coffee. That's fine. And that sort of started me on the road of, of oh, this is something I like. This is something I want to learn about. And that sort of gets to, to more about me and the fact that when I like something, I want to know everything about it. And so that just became a, a hobby, a passionate hobby, and then ultimately a passionate business. So Scott and I became friends when I was at college at Elizabethtown College in Pennsylvania. And uh, you were studying what? Biochemistry. Biochemistry? Yeah. Yeah. Super cool. So that has really helped. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's funny. There's a lot of science in coffee. And, and so it was kind of a natural overlap. I've spent decades working in the biochemistry laboratories and doing research. And that was like one part of my life, but it, it definitely bled into the coffee part too, where there's a lot of technical expertise that's involved and the brew dynamics and water temperature and all the things that are, you know, relatively scientific that you can geek out about if you want to. So how long have you had the coffee roaster and your business? So Carver Coffee Roasters uh, started in 2004, and that's the wholesale part of the business where we sell to other retail clients. So uh, other cafes and restaurants and offices and various retail businesses. Okay. So that's 16 years from doing the math right. And then uh, we have two retail locations. The, the oldest is Cafe Driati, which is in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Okay. And that turns 25 this year. Wow. Um, and then Open Eye Cafe, which is in Carborough and connected to the building where the roaster is, uh, turned 20 last year. So it's 21. It's 20. Wow. Uh, it, can, it, can, it can drive and drink and vote and everything now. <laughs> That's pretty cool. You've also been involved in some competitions for coffee and your, your uh, combinations and blends. Yeah, so there's two facets to that. One is uh, competitions or I guess awards that we win as either retail or as a, as a roastery. So we'll, we'll win awards for the cafes themselves for you know, best coffee or best cafe that are local or media awards. Um, then we'll win uh, actual awards for the coffee itself uh, that we win from uh, for the roastery. Uh, and some of those can be national and international awards. Okay, that's and, so cool. And then there's the aspect of uh, what I do with the rest of my time, which is uh, create coffee competitions around the world. And so we develop them, I judge them, I train judges, and we do them this on a national and an international level. And so I end up being, um, you know, a head judge for a world coffee competition that involves people from all over the world. Do you do contests for like baristas too, if they can make the little cool designs? There are actually seven competitions. No way! To the specific focus. So there's a latte art competition, which is just about making pretty pictures with the milk. There's a barista competition, which is all the barista skills. There's uh, a brewing competition, which is just about brewing coffee. I mean, it's crazy how focused you can get, but it's, well, it's really specific. People are serious about their coffee. As well, they and, and it's their profession. So these are yeah. professionals who do this every day, who've done it for maybe decades, and uh, they get into the details of it because they love it. Yeah, that is so cool. So you knew I was going to ask about, since you travel all over the world, just Tell me about some of that because you know I'm always talking about travel. <laughs> so I should back, I should start at the beginning, which is the whole reason I even travel for coffee, at least when I started, was because we wanted to find a better way 
to uh, establish the coffee system from all the way from where it was grown to where it's roasted to where it's uh, you know basically brewed or handed off to a customer. There were a lot of places that needed fixing, and when I when I started the roastery. My goal was to do it in a way that would answer some of the questions of how do we do this better? And one of the main things that was a problem in our industry was that the farmers were not fully supported. They were either not paid enough or they were uh, sort of largely ignored. You know, maybe you'd buy their coffee, but you, that was it. That was the only contact you had with them. And my goal was to create this new dynamic, this new template of how things should work through what I call the farmer direct relationship program. And so the whole premise was that I would go and talk to the farmer directly. There, there would be no middleman, there would be no uh, chance for there to be confusion. And I could go and find out exactly what they need, how much they need, how much money do they need to do it um, without having uh, like some weird filter in between us, uh, really answer the questions for them, yes, I can support you. Yes, I will pay you this much. Yes, we're going to have this conversation now, but we're going to keep having that conversation every year. You can count on us to be here every harvest, not just That's so awesome. worrying about it every year. And so because of that program, I uh, end up traveling a lot and having to go and, and work directly with all these farmers all over the world and, and multiple times a year. So at any given time, I think uh, up until maybe last year, I was traveling about half of the year. Wow. Uh, and, and Holy cow. Well, that was sourcing. I have other things. I do consulting and, and some of these competitions are, are also part of that travel. But, um, but so some of the countries you said were um, India, which was new to me. Yeah, and, Southern and, Southern um, and then some of the others that you know our coffee producers, but you're finding the small producer who might need sustainable support, right? Yeah, so that's actually funny. I was talking to someone just yesterday um, that I know a lot of famous uh, growers. There's, there's people who are becoming very famous for growing coffee, um, and they're, they're my friends, and, but they don't need me to buy coffee from them, right? They're selling their coffee already yeah. at a good yeah. price because they're, they're well-known in the, in the industry. And so my goal is to support the people who aren't famous, who aren't getting the recognition, but maybe are growing amazing coffee and no one knows about it. Yeah. Or maybe they're growing great coffee, but it could be even better and I can help them, support them to get to that point where we're, we're getting even higher quality coffee from them. That's so awesome. Yeah, yeah. And, and really that's a lot of it. Like if you, <laughs> if you were at a job uh, application, you were at an interview, and uh, the person said to you, hey, I got a job for you, but um, you're only going to get paid once a year. I can't really tell you how much you're going to get paid until the end of the year. Um, and anything can happen. There's a lot of things that aren't in your control about whether you get paid or not. No one would take that job. Right. But that's, that's farming. You know, and that's, that's Unfortunately, that's the reality that they're faced. And, and when you're talking about farming in, a, in another country where there's all these other, our job is to support them so that they can feel confident that they should yeah. put the effort in, that they should do the work because they know we'll be there to support them. We'll pay for the coffee when, when they're done. And that will continue to do that year after year. Well, they have the assurance that they have an assured buyer with an assured product. And I, I know my grandfather was in farming and a lot of times weather had a lot to do with the production. My, my new friends that are uh, vintners, some years are unbelievable. Like 2015 for the entire country of Italy, if you get a glass of red wine from 2015, it's going to be good. Right. Those grapes stayed on the vine for a really long time because they had so many sunny days. And it's probably right. the same with coffee too, yeah. as, as a coffee yeah. farmer. And they're even, they're even more um, susceptible to uh, microclimates and weather conditions. Uh, there's very uh, set circumstances that coffee can grow and can grow well. Okay. Um, they're not as hardy as wine. You can grow wine, a, a lot of grapes, a lot of places that you can't grow coffee. And so you're limited by some of that too. But yeah, there's all of these variables that you can't control. And then there's, you know, some that you can, but you don't, you can't control the results, right? And so it's just a crazy scenario to consider. We always want coffee around. We expect coffee to be there. Yeah. Unfortunately, our history with coffee is that it's a staple and it's not a staple. 
You know, it's, a, it's an agricultural product that is highly variable. And because of that, you know, our, we're trying to, to sort of change the way people think about it. Think about it more sure. like produce. Yeah. Because it's not going to be around that long or it's highly volatile and we have to be able to support it that way. Yeah. So when somebody orders your coffee, either online or in the cafe, they can rest assured that the blend comes from a group of farmers that really it's their heart and soul family. It's, they're a smaller producer, but it's quality over quantity. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so the farmer direct relationship program was designed to sort of bridge the gap of knowledge or information. So that not everybody uh, has a chance to to find out who grew their coffee, but we want them to. Right. And so they're all most of the people we work with are small family farms or small estates, and there are you know humans. There's people that you can connect with, and yeah. so we want to make that connection. And so we have things like this where oh, where that's you, awesome. You can meet Edith Meza. Right? Oh, I love it. I think Atasta. It's it's her mother's farm that she inherited, and her and her brother Ivan. I've taken it over. Where are they from? From Peru. From Peru. Yeah, yeah, so people. I want to so, go with you sometime. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's not a vacation, but it's a lot of fun. No, uh, <laughs> you probably put me to work. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I want you to meet Edith. Like, she yeah. is she's a wonderful human being. She's so passionate about what she does. She's really excited about growing coffee and trying new things and doing research and Right. But we're organically working together to make things better. Um, connecting people, like, like I said, I want to at least have you metaphorically meet Edith. Um, we just had her uh, into our roastery uh, the end of last year, so we'll bring cool. them. So she came cool. here. She came to North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. So we do that with a lot of our farmers. You know, a rare occurrence enough that you might not still get a chance to meet her. So we want you to, and to be able to tell her story if she can't tell it herself. And that way we're connecting communities around the world. And then we can all sort of have a greater understanding of what it really takes to grow coffee and what, what its value is. Right. So it's not just a cup of joe when you're right. popping into the cafe. Right. There's so much more that goes into it, including heart, soul, and passion. Yeah, it's people's lives. Very and, cool. and now you can realize it's a real person. There's families and communities involved that make this possible for you to enjoy coffee. Absolutely. Totally agree. So on your website, I was pleased to find out that when you do partner with Carborough Coffee, you can do training and have classes. Right. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that we think uh, sort of fall under the category of education that are important. Um, sort of like I mentioned, the more you understand about things, the more hopefully you appreciate them. And so that goes with even just farming practices that are happening, but also the idea of what is the barista doing? Right. You know, and, and maybe you want to try that. And, and maybe you want to see just how hard it is. And then the next time you go in, you'll appreciate it more when they make it perfect. And so we have workshops, we have classes. All of our wholesale clients, we train um, because we want them to represent our coffee well. Um, so that training is, is standard. But then we also open it up to the public where we'll have different classes for like espresso making or, or latte art and milk, milk steaming. Yeah. Um, if you want to learn how to brew coffee in a certain way, um, those are the things that we want people to be able to go home and do as well. Now I noticed that online. Are you going to try to put that as an online course soon? Yeah, everybody is thinking about that right now for sure. And, and we have thought about it for a long time and it kept sort of getting kicked down the list. Yeah. Of, yeah. Now it's at the top of the list. <laughs> That's something we're trying to set up for. We have a whole training facility. We have a training room where we teach people. Uh, and I think that's what we're going to set up and try to find a good way to do that awesome. uh, without having, what is it, 10 or, 10 or more people in a room. Yeah. One of the things I loved about science and being in research was you're always learning. Yeah. And that there is, you will never know it all, right? There's always so much to know and it's just, you're, you're, you have your own limits. Um, coffee is exactly the same way. Okay keeps me excited about it. And, and I'm learning every day. I've been doing this for decades and I'm still learning and I teach and I'm still learning, you know? That's and, awesome. And that I think keeps the energy and keeps the excitement going. I think I mentioned this, but just to reiterate, the farms that we buy from that are in the uh, direct relationship program are specifically meant to highlight like one varietal of coffee 
and one farm or one farmer, uh, because each of those have their own sort of personality. They have their own flavor profile. And we really want to bring that out and let people, the profile that is based on, you know, the terror and, and the, oh, way yeah, to, yeah. The, way, the way the coffee is grown and where it's from. But then there's the idea of, of blends, which is taking more than one of those and putting them together. And we, we only do a few of those and we do them very intentionally. Okay. And we do them with the idea that they will last longer than maybe one harvest of one coffee. And you can have them year round that way, a specific flavor profile. Conservation wise, that's really smart as well. And I just think really wise, a wise practice. Yeah. And then, you know, I, we, get to, we get to have a lot of fun with trying to also very intentionally name them so they resonate with people of place and you know, where you're from and yeah. You know, we named ourselves after our town in Carborough, North Carolina. So that's important to us is to have our foot, feet firmly on the ground as we go out into the world. And we do a little bit of that with our blend names too. So the, the okay. Piedmont blend is, is based on the Piedmont area that we live in of North Carolina. Um, the Blue Ridge blend is yeah. based on the Blue Ridge mountain chain that goes through in the western part of the mountains. Um, and then we have some other really like, fun, evocative names that are supposed to be sort of the, I, the thing that other people can catch on to, even if it's not a personal thing. Right, right. And then they can find more information on your website, which is? Arboroughcoffee.com. Okay, that's easy. Yeah, the, the websites are easy because they're just the name of the business. So the openeyecafe.com, cafejournati.com. Okay. So what's available to buy online right now if I wanted to order coffee and have it shipped to me so on the carbo coffee website is a is a shop sort of link that you can connect to or you can go right to it which is shop okay and on there are all of our coffee that you can buy by the bag okay. so you can have it delivered right to your home um, also a lot of brewing equipment and filters and things that you would need to brew coffee at home grinders okay kettles, all the fun stuff that, uh, and then there's a lot of swag, right? There's like t-shirts and hats and, and all kinds of stickers. I'm all about the swag. All the fun stuff that people would like to. So all of that is available and perfect time to have things delivered to your door. You don't have to go out of your home. And you can be found also on social media, Instagram, Facebook. So we're, we're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Yeah, and on all of our social media and on the, on the website, everything, there's ways to contact us. If you have questions about coffee, you have, you know, uh, burning questions, uh, that's an intentional pun, I'm sorry. We're here. We want to be a resource. We want to, to sort of help people enjoy coffee, and there shouldn't be any mystery, so we're willing to answer anything. You did ask a question last time that you had said something, something to the effect of, what can people not Google that you want? Yes. <laughs> yes. What can you answer that people can't find on Google? I think I'm going to give you two just because I think the first one is one that you could probably Google it, but I end up forgetting that people don't know it. Like I take it for granted and I need to stop doing that. And, and that is that coffee is the, the coffee that you know is the seed of a fruit. Okay. And I think a lot of people don't know that, that it's a fruit that's grown just like any other fruit and has a cycle of maturation that you only want to pick it when it's ripe. Oh, wow. Very narrow window of timing. Yeah. And then you find ways to get that seed, which is the coffee we know, out of that fruit and then process it in different ways for different flavor profiles. Yep. Totally didn't know that one. Yeah. <laughs> but you could Google that. It might just take you a while. Yeah. Um, but the, the one that I think that you'll have trouble finding with, uh, without any effort, with any effort really, um, is that you don't pay enough for coffee. Okay. Even now you don't pay enough for what it actually costs to, to, for the production of that coffee to the farmer and all the dozens of steps in between before wow. it gets to you. Yeah. And we're starting to get better at it, but it's still often not what it costs. And the people who suffer the most for that are the farmers. They're yeah. going to always get the short end of the stick because they're just being taken advantage of. Could you imagine if the world didn't have coffee? No, as you can see. I, 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 <laughs> 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 Great friends in Germany who are roasting coffee. One of the cool things about what I do is I know people in every country, right? If, if you're going somewhere and you need to know where to go for a cafe or for roastery, just tell me where you're going and I'll give oh, you That's a so way. awesome. I'm totally going to put that up there too. 
That's awesome. Just your, uh, you can hear your passion for coffee education and making those connections with the farmers. You can hear it. I love it. I love oh, it. And great. you are helping people connect around the world. And that's a big part of what I'm trying to do too. And um, so that's really cool. I'm so glad that you joined me here today. This one went so much better. <laughs> We had no interruptions or microphone issues. And and I just wish you all the best in uh, Carbo Coffee. And I'm very excited to get my first order in. And um, let me know if you need help with that. And have some, have some myself. But thanks so much for joining me here today, Scott. Oh, thank you for having and getting the word out. It's really helpful. Mm -hmm.